Hello, my name is Melissa Geist, and I'm from the Southeast Kansas Library System. Today I will show you how to set up a TechSoup account for your library. Before we begin, you will need to have your nonprofit or tax exempt code for your library. Feel free to pause this video at this time to get your paperwork or at any time during the presentation as needed. Okay, first thing we're going to do is go to www.techsoup.org. The website is shown on the screen now. Just type in that address in the address bar of your web browser. After the TechSoup page is loaded, you're going to want to log in if you have an account or join TechSoup if you do not have an account. We're going to click on the Join TechSoup button right now because I'm assuming many of you do not have a TechSoup account currently. First thing you're going to need to do is enter your information. Um, you'll have to put in your first name, last name, the email address that you want your TechSoup account to be associated with, and then confirm the email address. You will also need to put in a password. The password must be at least eight characters long with at least one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, and a number. You'll need to confirm your password as well. At this point you can choose a member name click on what is this. Your member name is displayed to other users when you participate in the forums and it's not used to log in so set your member name um, as something that you know kind of identifies yourself to people if you choose to use the forums. Security question. Type in a question that you'll know the answer to that other people aren't likely to be able to guess. Put in the answer to your security question. The next section is the Stay Connected section. This is where um, you can choose whether or not to receive the weekly newsletter, the monthly product alert, and a monthly email newsletter for libraries. Um, I choose to get the e weekly email newsletter. It gives me information about um, classes that are being held by TechSoup as well as software that has come in in the last week. Next section is Terms of Use. Scroll through there and read, and if you agree, click on the I Agree button. The last section is the anti-spam verification. The question you get will, may be different than the question here on my screen. This is basically to make sure that you are a human and not an automated system attempting to create an account. Fill in the information there, and then you can click on Join TechSoup. You will get an error message specifying what section you failed to fill out correctly if you if you did not fill out something correctly I already have an account created so I'm going to log into my account at this point now if you have freshly created your account, or if you had an account already and logged in, I need you to click on the button at the top that says Register Organization. At this point, you're going to try to associate your account with your organization. If your organization is not already in the TechSoup system, you're going to have to get it added. Um, at this point, we need to use the um, EIN or um, nonprofit ID. Decide if you are a 501c3 nonprofit, 501c3 public library, or a non 501c3 public library. Select the circle next to the one that you would like to try to do it as. I'm going to do a 501c3 public library, and I'm going to type in the EIN. After you've typed in the information, you can click on Find Your Organization. The page will refresh and your message will be at the bottom. There's no organization registered on TechSoup that matches the information you have entered. Please try again or register your organization. If you haven't been to TechSoup before, you're definitely going to need to register your organization. So, click on Register Your Organization.
At this point, you're going to need to create an association code. The association code must contain at least seven alphanumeric characters, and it should not contain any special characters or vital personal information. There will be additional information such as the organization type, the organizational subtype, and then you have to put in your organizational contact information, the organization name, street address, city, state, the county automatically filled itself in, zip code, and the organization email that you'd like to have information about from TechSoup go to. You can use the same email address that you registered with. You'll also need to put in a phone number. And then an annual operating budget. Um, you should have your records to get an accurate idea of this, but I don't have mine available, so I'm just going to put in a random number. Click continue once you have completed and filled in all the information on this page. Okay, it brought me back to the page, so that indicates that there is something I missed. Oh, in this case, I did not select a title. Um, go through and pick the title that most closely associates your position in the organization. There's no other red, so everything else I filled out on the page should be correct. Now you'll have to give some library specific information, such as the number of staff, the type of community that's served, the size of community, what type of internet connection that the library currently has. In most cases, the libraries um, either have a DSL line or cable. If your library has some di something different, please select that. Number of computers for staff. Does your library have? This question is asking about your um, internal internet. Um, if your computers are connected through cables, then you have an Ethernet LAN. If you can connect to the library's internet using a wireless system, then you have a wireless LAN. If you have to put in special codes to remotely log in, then you have a VPN. If you have none of the above, please select that. Next question is, do you provide public access to the internet? Select yes or no. And if so, how many terminals are available for public access? How did you hear about us? Just go through and select which one's the most relevant. Click continue when you have filled out everything on the page. 
and now it brought up the organization information for me to review go through and look at it make sure everything is set up correctly if the organization information library specific information and if you have a partner or affiliation code you can submit that there once you've reviewed everything go through and click submit again At this point, your organization has been registered. Now you have to go through and begin the qualifications to make sure that your organization does qualify for TechSoup um, software donations. If you don't have time to do that right now, you can go through and click on Qualify Later. If not, we will begin qualification. You're going to have to send TechSoup some documentation. You can choose to send them by fax, email, or mail. The process can take up to three weeks after you've submitted the information, so if you're going to need software, it's better to set up your organization early rather than late. To pre-qualify, you'll need to download the forms that they have listed here. Uh, depending upon what type of organization you selected in the previous sections, the forms may differ. Go through, download, and fill out the form. The form may have on there some requested other documents that you need to send in with it, so be sure to go through and read it carefully. Um, you'll have to put down how many pages that you're including, your name and the normal information, your organization information including your tax ID number. The qualification information that um, my library will have to include is the 5013C determination letter which is usually the tax exempt form that you receive. If the name on the IRS determination letter does not exactly match the name that you put on the registration form, you need to include a letter on your organization's letterhead that lists both names and explains the discrepancy. And it also needs to include your contact information in case they need to call you and have questions. If the address does not exactly match, you'll also need to include a letter on your organization's letterhead that lists both addresses and explains the discrepancy. You can combine the name letter and the address letter into one single letter. So once you've filled out this form, if you're going to fax it, then print it out and send it on its way. If you're going to email it, save it and email. After you've gone through and printed out and filled out the qualification documents, then you can continue to your account. At this point, you'll be able to look at the software, but you won't be able to actually order anything until your approval has come through. TechSoup has been relatively good at contacting you if they have additional questions, so you know, give them a few days, up to a week if you haven't heard anything back from them, then you'll want to contact them and find out the status of your application. This page will contain your profile information and your organization that you're associated with. If those look good, you can click on the next button. If your page does not have a next button, then you are free to start browsing the software and see what titles TechSoup has available for you to purchase. At this point, just go through the website, look and see what they have available, and keep an eye out um, for things that you're, you think your organization is going to need. You will also need to keep in contact with TechSoup to make sure that your organization request has gone through successfully without problems. This is how you register your organization for a TechSoup account. If you have any questions, um, you can contact me at mgeist at sekls.org. 
Have a good day.